Hello and welcome back in the second video on the Carl Zeiss S Planar Lens. Now in this video I would like to have a look at the maximum achievable resolution with this type of lens. Um, at first I, I tried to devise some kind of interferometer test uh, in order to uh, establish the quality. However, due to the, the, the proximity character of this lens and the rather limited uh, possibilities that um, my interferometer has, I could not come up with a, a decent test. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at uh, the very tiny features on photo masks uh, with this lens and see what kind of features we can still see um, when we do a projection. Uh, but first, a little bit of theory on the resolution of lenses. What do we exactly mean with lens resolution? Well, it's the ability of a lens to accurately reproduce features from a certain size from the object to the projection image. So let's take an example. On this slide, there's two line patterns shown. The top pattern is the object pattern, so the original pattern. And this pattern is projected using a lens system to the lower pattern, which is the image pattern. Now the original pattern consists of lines and spaces, and these gradually become finer in uh, width as we move from the left to the right. So if you look at the line pattern, you see that it's actually sort of a, a square wave in the horizontal direction. So the intensity is either high or low, but there's nothing in between. And we can consider this as a modulated signal with the spatial frequency getting higher when we go from left to right. If we look at the image pattern, we see that it's not a perfect copy of the object pattern. So at lower spatial frequencies in, in, in the left of the pattern, the projections uh, look pretty good. But when we go to higher frequencies or uh, smaller line widths, we see that the square wave of the uh, original intensity pattern has actually become sort of a, a sine wave function. And when we look at the pattern itself, we notice diminished sharpness and contrast. In optics, we have a very nice way to quantify this by means of the modulation transfer function, or MTF. This function quantifies the quality of the projection as a function of the spatial frequency. Uh, you can see that the value of the modulation transfer gradually goes down from 1 to 0 with increasing spatial frequency. Now, at first glance, you might think that this effect is due to imperfections in the lens. But uh, even a perfect lens shows this kind of behavior because of physical limitations that arise from, uh, for example, the wavelength of the light that you use and the numerical aperture of the lens. A nice way to visualize the MTF is to look at contrast. Um, MTF and contrast are not the same thing, but they're very closely related. So uh, changes in contrast can easily be calculated by comparing the intensity differences in the areas uh, in, the, in the graphs A and B, which are the high and low intensity uh, areas. And if you compare the original object pattern with the average intensities uh, in the projection image, you can calculate um, this uh, decrease in contrast. But what is the maximum projection resolution of a lens? Well, it rather depends on what you consider as an acceptable loss of image quality or the value of the MTF. So the choice for a specific value is rather arbitrary. Now, there are several criteria, uh, one of which is the Rayleigh criterion or Rayleigh limit, which states that when the intensity variations fall below 23%, we have reached the maximum resolution of the lens. If we use the Rayleigh limit as the maximum resolution, uh, we can calculate the value for a perfect lens. Uh, the value is dependent on wavelength and numerical aperture, but if you fill in the wavelength of 405 nanometers and you use the ap numerical aperture of uh, 0.28, so the values of the Carl Zeiss lens, we find the following values. Uh, resolution limit is uh, 0.7 microns approximately. And in addition, we can also calculate the depth of focus, which is approximately 5 microns. So the, the latter means that you should focus within plus or minus uh, two and a half microns in order to achieve the maximum resolution. Next in this video, we will look at how well the Carl Zeiss performs compared to the theoretical value of the maximum resolution. 
Now for the test I had in mind, I actually wanted to use a uh, proximity mask. Uh, why? Well, there's, there's some interesting features on a proximity mask. For example, there's this uh, test pattern on the sides of the mask, which is which contains features of known sizes, generally in the order of 10 microns to half a micron. And we'll use one of these patterns to assess the quality of the lens. So before we can assess the quality of the lens, let's first have a look at the quality of projections that you do with a microscope objective. So in this case, I have a 10 times magnification microscope objective placed directly uh, at the mask and we'll look at the features on the mask using this setup. Now here's what we see with the camera and this microscope objective, so 10 times magnification. In the center, um, the central part, that's what we'll focus on, um, where we see the, um, the, the blue uh, imaging on the dark background. And basically what you see is that there's no problem with the imaging up to uh, about one micron, which is uh, not sufficient. So we'll switch to a microscope objective with a higher magnification. This is what we see when we exchange the 10 times microscope objective with one uh, that has a, ma a magnification of 40 times. Uh, of course, the field is much smaller, but uh, you can easily see that even uh, features of 0.5 microns can be resolved using this microscope objective. What I'll do is rearrange the setup in such a way that we can now assess the quality of the projection of the Carl Zeiss S-planar lens. So trying to assess the uh, maximum resolution of the projection, I started out with configuration one. Um, and if you look at this configuration, there's actually a, a problem with it. So basically what I wanted to do is use the Carl Zeiss uh, lens uh, the way it's also used in a wafer stepper. So you have an object mask and you demagnify the image on the object mask to a, uh, another image, image number one in this case. And then what I wanted to do is uh, look with the microscope objective at this image. Um, now there's, there's actually, the problem is that in this configuration, the microscope objective and the Carl Zeiss lens are actually sort of in, in competition of who, who's the worst in projection. And on the other side, in image two, you only end up with a magnification of eight times. So um, instead I decided to go for configuration two, where I use the Carl Zeiss lens as a microscope objective. So basically what you do is you magnify the objects on the mask by a factor of five, and then you look at this image with another microscope um, uh, objective, which has, for example, magnification of 40, but it can even be 10. And then in this case, you end up with a much higher magnification in the image plane too. And also um, th the limiting factor in this case is always the Carl Zeiss lens uh, when it comes to resolution. So basically configuration two is a much better uh, configuration to examine the maximum resolution uh, of the Carl Zeiss lens. Okay, so this is what the actual uh, setup looks like, the configuration two setup. To the right, you have the photo mask with the UV light source. And to the left, uh, you have the projection of the uh, photo mask, which is five times bigger than the photo mask uh, pattern itself. Now I just placed a, a small screen here uh, to demonstrate that the projection is actually there. And what we're going to do is remove this screen and then replace it with the uh, microscope objective uh, in order to study this projection. Here we see a one micron feature on the mask as we view it in configuration two. You can see that it's very well resolved. All features are um, visible. Even the one by one micron dots at the end of the lines are uh, very well visible. You notice some unsharpness. Um, it's definitely a bit less sharp uh, as uh, when you view it with the microscope objective. However, keep in mind that the microscope objective has a much higher numerical aperture. And in addition, the S planar lens has a very, very big object field of over uh, 100 by 100 millimeters, which is of course huge compared uh, to the microscope. And it also has an extremely low distortion in this complete image field. Now, the main question here, of course, is, is the projection quality still within the rally limit? 
And in order to measure this, I measured the intensity over the lines and space. So actually, um, what I did was I used a freeware program called ImageJ to measure the intensities in the plot. And this is the result. So the graph actually shows that um, the peak to value, um, value is actually about 50%. Um, if we take the average values uh, in the areas of the uh, lines and spaces, we get up to a value of about 30 to 35%. So it's well within the rally limit. The same thing can be done with a 0.7 and 0.5 micron features. And the problem with the 0.7 feature is that there's actually a defect in the mask, uh, which makes it impossible to do a measurement. Uh, this defect already showed up under the microscope. However, I forgot to point it out to you. Um, anyway, if we do the same measurement as with the 1 micron on the 0.5 micron feature, we see that the peak to value difference is about 20%. Um, the averages over the spacings are about 15%, so it's below the rally limit. So we know that the rally limit is reached somewhere between 1 micron and half a micron. Um, it actually ver matches very well with the value from the theory. So my best guess at this point would be that this lens is actually still performing at the maximum theoretical value for this lens. Okay, so I hope I've been able to show you some of the special aspects of this Carl Zeiss lens. Uh, as you saw, it is still operating almost at its theoretical maximum, which is surprising after 35 years. Um, and I hope actually that I uh, am able to make a small wafer stepper out of this lens. This is a project for uh, the next video. So hopefully I'll see you uh, in the next video. Bye bye.